Heat from below the Pacific Ocean is fueling Yellowstone supervolcano. Now, as we're going into this, this is Hebgen Lake. They had an earthquake there in Yellowstone, 1959, of a 7.2 magnitude. It caused landslides, and from what they say, the shaking that we're feeling here in Yellowstone is caused from that earthquake. I recorded the Old Faithful live streaming webcam. It's nighttime there, of course, but with the full moon, the, the moonlight, um, you can see the outlines of the contour of the uh, topography there. And here we see it blowing. And you'll see that there are other uh, fumaroles and geysers around it. And in the background, it's going to pan a little while, so you'll be able to see more. And uh, that's the, brown, the black part of that area down there is a mountain. And uh, you see the sky uh, behind that it will be filling up with a lot of steam. And, um, and above that area was just like an air glow type of thing from the sunlight. This, the sunlight is lighting up the steam, which is hanging low over the mountains. And above that, you'll see it's total darkness in the sky. You may see a couple of stars shining through the, fo the foggy um, atmosphere of the steam. But as we're talking about this, I'll let you enjoy this. This uh, steaming here you see on the, the uh, Old Faithful here on the bottom right uh, in the foreground towards us is uh, going to be going on for quite a long time and uh, it will be filling up this area, the whole area of the steam. It's not just Old Faithful but it's all the other little holes you see there in the background towards the left and you'll see a lot more later on giving even out even more steam uh, and you'll see as it goes uh, pans around to the left, you'll see a whole cloud of steam hanging over the uh, mountain range there. And above that, you'll see total darkness. So the moonlight is showing, it will be showing us the steam. Um, I'm showing you here with the little arrows uh, in the background. There's more steam coming out there in the back. Uh, that's okay. You know, it's nighttime, but because it's moon bright, because of the full moon, uh, we can see something. Now, concerning the heat from below the supervolcano, the Pacific Ocean is fueling Yellowstone because Yellowstone, yes, it's on the Ring of Fire, considering on the Ring of Fire, it's on the uh, mountain range of the Rocky Mountains, which is uplifted because of the subduction zone, the Pacific Plate. Uh, bouncing underneath, the, you know, shoving itself underneath the North American plate. This is on Vision Times and it's by um, Troy Oaks. But he gets all this information, of course, as we know, from the geologists of Yellowstone Observatory of the USGS. He says, while well, we read stories in the national media of possible catastrophic eruption, of the Yellowstone supervolcano area, scientists are not so sure of the likelihood of such an event in an effort to better understand the region's subsurface geology. Geologists are taking another look at geological history. Geology professor Li Jun Liu, who led the new research, found that Yellowstone's volcanism is far more complex and dynamic than previously thought, saying in a statement, quote, the heat needed to drive volcanism usually occurs in areas where tectonic plates meet and one slab of crust slides or subducts under another. However, Yellowstone and other volcanic areas in the inland western U.S. are far away from the active plate boundaries along the west coast. In these inland cases, a deep-seated heat source known as a mantle plume is suspected of driving crustal melting and surface volcanism." End quote. A new study, which was published in the journal Nature Geoscience, the researchers used a method called seismic tomography to see deep inside into the subsurface of the western United States. So this helped them to piece together the geologic history behind the volcanism of Yellowstone. The team then used supercomputers to run different tectonic scenarios to detect a range of possible geologic histories 
over the past 20 million years. The results showed little support for the traditional mantle plume hypothesis. Hmm. Graduate student Quan Zihu, who was part of the team, explained this. Our goal is to develop a model that matches up with what we see both below ground and on the surface today. We call it a hybrid geodynamic model because most of the earlier models either start with an initial condition and move forward or start with the current condition and move backward. Our model does both, which gives us more control over the relevant mantle processes." End quote. One of the variables entered into their model was heat because hot subsurface material like what you would find in a mantle plume should rise vertically towards the surface. But in their model, that was not what they saw. This is what Liu explained. It appears that the mantle plume under the western United States is sinking deeper into the earth through time, which, means, which seems counterintuitive. This suggests that something closer to the surface an oceanic slab originating from the western tectonic boundary is interfering with the rise of the plume. Hmm. So you've got a slab cutting off or you know somehow capping off the plume. That's very interesting. For many years the, ma the mantle plume hypothesis has been contentious. Nevertheless, this new finding adds to the evidence for a revised tectonic scenario and the researchers said this and this is what they added. A robust result from these models is that the heat source behind the extensive inland volcanism actually originated from the shallow oceanic mantle to the west of the Pacific Northwest coast. This directly challenges the traditional view that most of the heat came from the plume below Yellowstone. Eventually, we hope to consider the chemical data from the volcanic rocks in our model. That will help us further constrain the source of the magma because rocks from deep mantle plumes and near-surface tectonic plates could have different chemistries. This is what Zhu explained. As for the recent stories in the national media, researchers say it's still too early to know the possibility of a violent demise of Yellowstone occurring anytime soon, Liu went on to say. Quote, of course, our model cannot predict specific future super eruptions. However, looking back through 20 million years of history, we do not see anything that makes the present-day Yellowstone region particularly special, at least not enough to make us suspect that it may do something different from the past when many catastrophic eruptions have occurred. More importantly, this work will give us a better understanding of some of the mysterious processes deep within the Earth, which will help us better understand the consequences of tectonic plates including the mechanism of earthquakes and volcanoes. Of course, we don't expect anything different to happen than what happened in the past 20 million years. Of course you don't. <laughs> but, uh, all right, we know that's interesting. Now we go into what happened. In uh, 1959 was, of course, totally unexpected, and that was a huge earthquake. And it caused the water wells in Hawaii, which was over 4,000 miles away, to drop in their water levels. Meaning that somehow it jostled the islands of Hawaii, which are volcanic islands. And how is that possible? Because Yellowstone, uh, Yellowstone as we know, is okay in the, in the western United States, just east of the Rocky Mountains. And Hawaii are volcanic islands formed by a hotspot mantle plume that is in the middle of the Pacific tectonic plate, in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific Ocean. How is it that Yellowstone is connected with the volcanic islands of Hawaii? Well, one of my uh, viewers sent me a comment saying it could be something that took place in the Pacific tectonic plate itself that had, uh, at the same time, um, effects on both Yellowstone and the Hawaii uh, Islands. And we noticed that when our friend Ben Fiorulo, who does the earthquake analysis for Yellowstone and other areas of the world, noticed that a couple of months back when Yellowstone had an earthquake, 
it had the same size earthquake at the same time in Hawaii Big Island. And he says, hmm, that's interesting. Is there some kind of a connection between Yellowstone and the Hawaii Big Island? Why did they have an earthquake of the same size at the same time, maybe two minutes from each other? So, you know, volcanoes. I don't know. Maybe it's a mantle plume connection underneath, you know, the big bubble underneath the earth. Maybe it's got like two little uh, tunnels, one under Yellowstone, one under, one under uh, Hawaii. Who knows? We don't know. But the, what we see is what happened a couple of months ago with the consecutive, uh, uh, with the uh, twin earthquakes, Yellowstone and Hawaii. And what happened with the Yellowstone big earthquake in, in uh, August 17th, 1959, magnitude 7.2, Hebgen Lake, and the uh, water wells in uh, Hawaii uh, decreasing greatly in their water. Something happened uh, because of the, uh, the Yellowstone quake. So the Epoch Times reports now here, Eva Fu, the deadly 1959 earthquake is still rattling Yellowstone supervolcano 60 years later. Basically, these are what we would call aftershocks. A staggering number of smaller earthquakes that rocked Yellowstone National Park between 2017 and 18 brought fears of an impending supervolcano, but a recent study uh, finds a, a different uh, conclusion. The study by the Geophysical Review Letters at the University of Utah suggests that the swarms of earthquakes might actually be the aftershocks of the Hebgen Lake earthquake that struck Yellowstone 60 years ago, August 17, 1959. And now we know that the University of Utah is responsible for monitoring the earthquakes in the Yellowstone supervolcano region, Yellowstone National Park. The magnitude 7.2 earthquake jolted the land of Montana for about 30 seconds, toppling the dining room fireplace in the historic Old Faithful Inn. And it shook also, it was so powerful that the ground in some areas dropped by 20 feet. A new lake named Quake Lake was formed in Montana, and water in the wells of Hawaii, about 4,900 miles away, rose up as a result. Now these kinds of earthquakes in Yellowstone are very common, said Keith Copper, director of the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, according to the news release. He says these swarms happen very frequently. This one was a little bit longer and had more events than normal. Gunian Pang and Copper, who co-wrote the study, analyzed the patterns of 3,345 earthquakes that took place between June 2017 and March 2018, and we had over 2,500 quakes between 2018 and now, 2019, along Maple Creek in the northwestern part of Yellowstone, they found that the quakes were oriented in the same way as a Hebgen Lake earthquake. And that's where we have a lot of the, uh, in northwest of the lake, is, of Yellowstone Lake is where we have the new thermal hotspot that they want to find out, uh, they, have to, they have to go send, uh, as of May 1st, they started their geological field trip, sending the geologists out, and they were uh, putting in monitoring stations, and size, f fixing up the uh, seismographs that were there, making sure everything worked properly. And uh, they, were, they had to dig through four feet of snow, so you can imagine how difficult it was even in the, as of uh, the month of May. They still have over two and a half feet of snow there. So, <clears throat> You know, it's not easy for them. They have over 10,000 hydrothermal areas in the whole of the Yellowstone National Park, and they have over 60% of the Earth's geysers are found there. So uh, since the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was established in the year 2001, so it's basically 19 years old, they have a, they have a lot of work to do. and. Uh, they still have a lot of work to do. So anyway, going back to this, there are formulas to predict how many aftershocks you should see, he said. This is what Copper explains. For Hebgen Lake, there looked like a deficit in the number of aftershocks. And now that we've had these, it has evened things out back up to the original expectations, end quote. The researchers noted that there have been instances of aftershocks 
for of a major earthquake and continue uh, to continue even decades later. For example, the magnitude 6.9 Bora Peak earthquake that hit central Idaho in 1983 also sent shockwaves through the region 35 years later in 2017. According to Koper, earthquakes are different from other natural catastrophes such as floods, hurricanes, and wildfires in that the tremors can keep coming for months or even decades. Koper said earthquakes don't happen as a single discrete event in time. And Pang added, we don't think it will increase the risk of an eruption. Okay, that's what everybody is, of course, questioning. Will there be another super eruption? They're not talking about a super eruption, but they have spoken of a uh, hydrothermal eruption or a lava eruption, as, for example, we saw last year with Kilauea. Now, um, Yellowstone recent activities, just about a couple of weeks ago, the ledge geyser in the park erupted. Ledge geyser is in the Norris Geyser Basin. That's where we had the steamboat geyser erupting as well, basically just once a week. And in the Norris Geyser Basin, we also have the ledge geyser erupting, shooting hot water at an angle, and it's going, it goes up to about 125 feet in height and a distance of 220 feet, according to the Billings Gazette. And it also is a very noisy geyser because of the fact that it has such a very narrow aperture and opening that it whistles and makes a tremendous, terrible, loud noise. And you have to shout at each other to hear each other when you're standing near it, watching it. Now, the park's website states that ledge geyser erupted at a regular cycle of every 14 hours in prior years. The geyser became inactive between 1979 and 1993 and then erupted on a very regular cycle of every four to six days during the following two years, according to the website. Yellowstone has 1,300 thermal features and 500 geysers, more than anywhere else on Earth. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.